Hello, dear friends. My name is Dr. Igor Atabekov. I am clinical oncologist practicing since 2010. Today we will talk about the methods of cancer treatment without surgery. So uh, I will give you the general information about these methods, what can be used in medicine and uh, some information about their pros and cons. But of course, uh, everything depends on the individual situation of the patient, meaning that in every case, the doctors must um, choose the best options for the patients. But you can always ask your doctors about what are their options in your case. So let's get started. First of all, uh, of course, uh, treatment without surgery uh, may mean a lot of things like chemotherapy, for example, or herbal therapy, but we will talk about uh, the methods that will directly uh, destroy the tumor. These are called local regional methods. Uh, and uh, they use different kinds of physical or chemical factors that can kill cancer cells. These methods may heat up uh, the tumor or not heat up the tumor. Uh, heating up uh, tumor methods have some uh, negative sides. Of course, they're effective, they kill uh, the tumor effectively, but they can also heat up the area around the tumor, meaning it will it may damage the surrounding structures and it may damage uh, blood vessels. That's why um, sometimes uh, the, uh, usage, the usage is limited. Also, the, uh, many of these methods are limited uh, in case of uh, large tumors. So, first heating method, method is radiofrequency ablation. Ablation means destruction of, the, of something, of tumor. We put electrodes inside the tumor, uh, through the puncture, for example, or through endoscopy, meaning uh, through, for example, gastroscopic device. And uh, we generate this uh, electric current to heat up the tumor and kill the tumor cells. Uh, negative side, that it will heat up tumors around, as I already said. And uh, if there is a blood vessel nearby, we cannot use this method. If the tumor is less than 3 cm, that it will be perfect. Uh, if it's less than 5 cm, also can be used bigger, mm, already not a very good choice. It can be used in uh, many cases, in liver cancer, in, uh, for example, um, liver metastases, in lung cancer, a kidney, uh, prostate cancers, or, for example, bone metastases. Similar method is um, microwave ablation, and uh, the difference is uh, it has less damage to tissues around, but uh, the um, zone of destruction is not perfectly round. That may give us some uh, difficulties. Good thing, in most cases, you don't need to do any uh, cuts. You just uh, do the puncture. Uh, you don't need the very deep uh, anesthesia, uh, intubation, just maybe uh, sometimes even local anesthesia. The procedure is not as long as the surgery, the rehabilitation is faster, and many patients who cannot uh, survive surgery because of their condition can survive these procedures. And by the way, in some cases when the tumor is not big, uh, the uh, risk of recurrency is less than in surgery when you use uh, radiofrequency. And of course, the costs are less than surgery. But if the tumor is near the blood vessels, for example, or a little bit bigger, uh, you can use uh, radiation therapy. Radiation therapy is widely used uh, and it's in all recommendations. Radiation therapy uses uh, radioactivity to kill the tumor. It can be targeted from outside on the tumor. You can use brachytherapy when you put the source of radiation inside the tumor and it will uh, produce uh, radiation slowly for some period of time, so it will be killing tumor. Uh, for example, it's widely used in cervical cancer or in prosthetic cancer, but it also has some problems. Uh, for example, it can damage the tissues around. It can, for example, in liver, cause uh, liver failure if there is already cirrhosis. It can damage guts. It can cause, uh, if it's prostate cancer, it can cause uh, impotence or urethral problems. It can cause dermatitis, etc. Next method is we can uh, freeze the tumor. This is called cryoablation. And this can be applied for uh, different skin tumors and uh, uh, cervical precancerous lesions. 
for prosthetic, lung, breast cancer, for kidney, uh, gut cancers. The thing is we insert the uh, special tubes uh, into the tumor, we pump gas there, ergon that will uh, freeze the tumor, then we will unfreeze it with helium, then freeze again, unfreeze, the crystals will be formed and they will damage the membranes, the proteins will be uh, destructed and that's why this tumor will die. The negative side, again, it will freeze a little bit around the tumor, but it has minimal blood loss and pain uh, connected to this procedure. Also, it can be performed, for example, in prosthetic cancer under spinal anesthesia instead of uh, general deep anesthesia. And in one study in prostate cancer, uh, when they compared it uh, to radiation therapy, which is standard for these patients, uh, after three years they found out that the recurrency risk was lower in cryoablation. So it's very promising, but needs to be investigated more. One more method is HIFO therapy. It's a high-intensity ultrasound that will focus on the tumor. Uh, it's a very effective method in, uh, method in shrinking tumor, even sometimes it disappears, and uh, it may remove the pain, for example, in pancreatic cancer patients. Very big advantage. It doesn't need any cuts or any punctures. Negative sides, of course, it can affect skin a little bit, uh, the fat under skin, it can cause some scar formation under skin. Also, the, it can cause also heating up this, the tumor and around the surrounding tissues. And the studies about uh, is it really equivalent to other standard methods or not? Is it uh, the same? Does it have the same effectiveness or is it less effective? Are still lacking. That's why we're not totally sure if it's uh, it can be used instead with. Uh, no, no loss of effectiveness. And next, another method is photodynamic therapy. We inject the person with a special substances, photosensitizers, that will, if they meet with their special light, uh, they will be activated and kill the cells uh, where they are located. We inject the patient with these uh, substances, they will be accumulated in all the cells of the body, but afterwards, after one, two days, uh, their um, substance will be expelled from normal cells, but still accumulated in tumor cells. And uh, at that time, at that moment, we need to apply special lights that will go deep inside the tumor and kill it. This method doesn't heat up the tissues around the tumor. That's why it's, uh, um, it doesn't have this uh, ability to cause damage to blood vessels around or other structures around. How do we apply this light? Depends on the, where the tumor is, what is the diagnosis, it can be, for example, applied through puncture, it can be applied through endoscopy, uh, or if it's on the surface just uh, directly. And this method uh, can really improve the survival of the patients. Uh, the other group of methods are intra-arterial methods, meaning uh, that the tumor has some arteries that will feed it, and we find these arteries, and uh, we insert, inject some substances that will be um, we inject some substances into this artery into, that will feed this tumor, not all the other body. This is the, um, the goal is to make the maximum concentration of these damaging substances in the tumor, but not in the body. So the body won't be intoxicated. Uh, we can use, for example, chemotherapy. Uh, for this purpose, we use special um, microspheres with chemotherapy. They will, we will inject them into the artery of the tumor and uh, they will clog the blood flow first, uh, let the tumor die because of loss of blood flow. Also, there is a chemotherapy there that will kill the tumor cells. For example, in liver cancer, uh, the patient undergoes the small cut on his uh, hip, and then through the artery, uh, the catheter goes up, up, up to the liver, they find the tumor blood vessel, put it there, and inject the substance. Very interesting other method is uh, radiation embolization. They inject microspheres, but with radioactive substance. Uh, for example, yttrium-90. This is the uh, substance that produces better particles that will um, be injected into the tumor, uh, tumor blood vessel, will accumulate in the tumor and uh, produce radiation there in the tumor and kill it. It's a very new and effective methods, unfortunately quite expensive. There were also attempts to 
uh, put catheter in their blood vessels and just inject chemotherapy. But in reality, this method uh, was too difficult to um, perform because the catheter is difficult to, to put in this artery and also it was not as effective as it was expected. That's why I won't talk about this uh, too much. And one more method is called nano knife. They put special electrodes uh, around the tumor and make the um, electric current that will uh, produce micro pores in the membranes and kill the cancer cells. Uh, the good thing it's not a heating procedure. It will only be focused on the tumor, not a surrounding tissue. It's very effective. Uh, it's, uh, it has a fast rehabilitation period. It uh, doesn't need uh, deep anesthesia. Unfortunately, it's quite rare for now and uh, it's quite expensive. So, dear friends, now you can understand that all these methods have pros and cons and uh, they have some indications and contraindications. For example, some methods are limited by the size of the tumor, the number of the tumors, the uh, health of the liver, for example, something else. So, it depends on individual situation. That's why uh, always talk to your doctor uh, if uh, any of these methods are applicable for you or not. And then the doctor will give you the best options in exactly your case. And that's all for today. I hope it was interesting for you. God bless you. Bye-bye.